Hello. So I had a great conversation with a client yesterday and I just wanted to make a video about it because everyone goes through this and this is repairing your relationship with food. I think it would be fair to say that 99.9% .9 of us have had or currently have a poor relationship with food. And what I mean is you don't have complete food freedom. Some of us are moderators and some of us are obsceners and it's very important to identify which type you are and I do believe that you can go from being an abstainer to a moderator. I do believe that's possible because I am an example of that. I struggled with severe binge eating for a long time. You know, it would start out with like doing really well during the day, pretty much carnivore during the day, and then I would cave and go to the, the chemical laden keto treats at night and then that would turn into higher carb keto foods like coconut manna and sweet potato and eventually it got to the point it got so bad I was so triggered by the sight of my emaciated body that I would just wake up and just start hitting grocery stores and pretty much stocking up on food that I would binge on it was very bad it was a very traumatizing phase of my life I wrote about it in depth in my book and praise God I am healed from that I'm fully delivered redeemed restored I not only am strict carnivore, or I was strict carnivore for two years, I started reintroducing foods, which went really well, and I am not strict carnivore anymore. However, I do eat primarily meat because that is what I feel best doing, and that's what I crave. However, I can eat other things. I can eat sourdough bread, and I was diagnosed celiac. I was a true celiac. I can eat popcorn. I can eat fruit. I can eat sweet potato but I don't eat these things on a regular basis because I don't crave them. My relationship with food has changed so much. I am not seeking an experience with food. I am seeking freedom to live my life because the food I'm eating no longer keeps me in bondage. So a great way to gain food freedom is to cut out carbohydrates and foods that have been chemically processed or processed at all basically because that makes them more hyper palatable and you know we have things called the bliss point and just other ingredients that make food addictive msg extra sugar even excess salt makes things more hyper palatable and so when you remove all of these things that are just in excess your body starts working properly you become more leptin sensitive and your relationship with food will change. You're no longer getting a huge dopamine hit when you're eating your food, and so you stop thinking that you're gonna get dopamine when you eat. You, you just break that relationship, and it feels really hard at first, especially if you are used to using food as a reward or you know getting that dopamine hit with salty chips or a banana split sundae. Like, Whatever your thing is, you're getting a dopamine hit and that's why you want to go back to it. You can retrain your, your mind and your neural pathways and your body to want dopamine from healthy sources. You could get endorphins from exercise. That's a good replacement. You can get dopamine from stepping out into the sunshine and taking a nature walk or playing with your pet or cuddling with your spouse or helping someone else. So my point is that you can replace this hit of dopamine with something healthy. Another thing that really releases dopamine is social media. So anytime like you get a like on your post or something like that, they've structured social media in a way that it's acting on your dopamine way more than what would be natural and that's why even adults but very much so children and this upcoming generation are just so addicted to social media because of the dopamine aspect so once you become aware of that you can really become empowered and take control of okay you know what this food that I'm constantly drawn to that I know brings inflammation to my body it affects my mood I don't feel good my stomach hurts I know it doesn't do good things but for some reason I'm always drawn to it it's really nice to know that that's dopamine and that you can break that cycle Secondly, it's nice to know that you don't need those things. Many of them are like poison. Seed oils are like poison. Sugar is a drug and a lot of people are treating it like a drug and you don't need them. You do not rely on them. All you need is animal protein and animal fat to thrive. I gained 65 healthy pounds 
eating zero carbs. I reversed over 10 autoimmune diseases, chronic Lyme disease, chronic C. diff without carbs. And that was including hypothyroidism, including Hashimoto's. So you don't need them. So that's another kind of like motivation to just let go of them and let yourself get into this space where you're just giving your body what it needs. And when you cut carbs and hyper palatable things out of the picture, you become leptin sensitive. Leptin is our satiety hormone. And when that works, it will regulate your appetite. It will regulate your weight. If you need to gain weight, you'll gain it. If you need to lose weight, you'll lose it. It's incredible. God made us so wonderfully so masterfully that we can really trust our bodies when we remove these fake foods. So that's a beautiful and encouraging thing. So if you currently struggle with your relationship with food, you feel like you're using it as a crutch, um, you're using it for emotional comfort, you're using it for distraction, you've got to get to the root and I would encourage you to cut out those foods that are a crutch. Now you could take the strict approach and go just beef, salt, and water, or you could have some variety. I tried just beef, salt, and water eight times and I felt worse each time. I think largely because of the histamine content in the beef I was eating, but also because it was very restrictive and I was already way underweight and I had to eat enough. So if you're someone who needs to gain weight, but you also need to restore your relationship with food, you might consider having more variety in your animal-based approach. So maybe have seafood, veal, goat, and lamb. You can still keep it ruminant animals. You can keep it zero sweeteners. You can keep it dairy-free, but just even adding that variety of different ruminant animals can just make a world of difference. Billy Doe Meats has cuts that make this way of eating so decadent and enjoyable that you won't feel restricted. I personally feel that way and I felt that way. The first year I was strict. I started out with sweeteners like stevia and dairy to just get some weight on my body. I was 69 pounds at five foot six and my first priority was get some weight on this body. So I used sweeteners and dairy because they were hyper palatable to eat enough. After two months I cut them out and I was strict carnivore eating lamb, goat, veal. Once I found Billy Doe Meats it was just a breeze. It was a total breeze. and. I could never I could never thank them enough honestly and then I started to reintroduce foods so now I'm at this point where I can eat things like sourdough bread which would be a total trigger for me in the past or buttered popcorn would be a total trigger for me that's a that would be under the category of comfort foods my mom used to make homemade popcorn for all of my sleepovers with my friends and stuff and it was like the most requested thing because she makes the best homemade popcorn and she would melt like a whole stick of butter for this bowl of popcorn I can eat that now without like being triggered and without feeling like I have to eat this every day now. It's not like that at all and I'm so grateful and so I just want to encourage you if you're in that place where you feel like you'll never be there, you might be. But right now it's really important for you to own where you're at. If you know that about yourself, then just fill your home, fill your, your fridge and your freezer with satiating meat and allow your body to heal, allow leptin to heal, and then you also want to consider what is going on emotionally. If you are living in a very stressful environment, you are going to be more vulnerable to giving in to comfort eating. Everyone is. Everyone is. Everyone has this vulnerability. The mechanism behind this is that when you eat, it lowers cortisol instantly. So what you could do instead, if you really feel like you need to eat, and it, but it's emotional hunger, give yourself some grace and maybe just allow yourself to have some more animal foods. So for me, that would look like, okay, I am like falling apart here. I'm about to cave and go get five pints of keto ice cream and these Quest bars. What I'm gonna do instead is go to Whole Foods and get some flanken style beef short ribs because those are awesome decadent, delicious, and it's a treat. It's something that I'm not eating on a regular daily basis. That way you're still gonna support leptin. It's really hard to overeat things when you're not going off track with those foods. So give yourself some grace and say, okay, I am gonna eat, but I'm gonna still make a wise choice. But I'm gonna make a choice and do something that's interesting, something that is exciting. I am gonna treat myself. So that could look like whatever. The red wild 
Argentinian shrimp from Costco tastes like lobster. That would be a great treat. What else would I make? I would get chuck roast and then I would make Michaela Peterson's crunchy crispy things or she used to call it meat popcorn but it's essentially just shredded meat air fried with fat on it and it gets very crispy and delicious. The last thing that I want to talk about is fasting. And I have a video on fasting but I want to tie this into this topic of your relationship, healthy relationship with food. If you feel like you have an urge to fast to undo something that you did you know say you went out and got real sugar donuts or whatever and you're feeling like crap and you just want to go back to where you were and you have an urge to just fast yourself back into that I would encourage you to wait I would actually encourage you to do the opposite and feed yourself the proper foods why because of the subconscious message that you're sending to yourself not because it wouldn't help. In fact, it probably would bring you back to where you were quicker. But the truth is, that's only from the physical standpoint. Mentally and emotionally, you're abusing yourself. You have to show yourself that you are choosing to love yourself. That you care more about your health than your weight. That you can be patient with yourself. So something I like to tell people and encourage them to do is when you mess up, Think of yourself as a toddler. Think of yourself as your own child. So say my child ate a bunch of candy at a sleepover and they came home and they were like freaking out and falling apart and felt like crap and had a tummy ache. I wouldn't say, hey, you ate a bunch of junk so you have to fast all day tomorrow. You don't get to eat tomorrow. Of course I wouldn't say that. I would say, I hope you learned your lesson. We're gonna get back on track tomorrow and eat the right foods and you'll start feeling better in no time. Do the same thing for yourself. Do not use fasting as punishment. If you do this consistently, you will get to the point where you can fast for enjoyment and for the health benefits. And it's so important that you make the right decisions to support this healthy relationship with food. And then you can have food freedom. I hope that this encouraged, inspired someone out there.